Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope to which we were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Peace be with you. And also with you. Very warm welcome to our service this evening. It's an absolute honour, privilege and delight to join you in this act of worship as we celebrate the Eucharist and we ordain Torhild to the priesthood. I'd just like to say as we begin, very warm welcome to family, friends, colleagues, brothers, sisters in Christ, uh, friends and worshippers from this church, the other church in the Benefice and further afield. If you have had any part to play in Torhild's journey of faith, thank you. Thank you to those of you who have prayed for her for many years. Thank you to those of you who've discipled her, taught her scripture, rebuked her from scripture, um, and walked with her as she's had those huge life-changing conversations of discernment and explored the call of God over her life. Thank you. And you might think you only had a tiny, tiny role to play in that, but it's all significant under God. So thank you for your faithfulness to him and to her for the part you've played in the journey that's brought her to this point in time. God calls his people to follow Christ and forms us into a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to declare the wonderful deeds of him who has called us out of darkness and into his marvellous light. The church is the body of Christ, the people of God, and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the whole church is summoned to witness to God's love and to work for the coming of his kingdom. To serve this royal priesthood, God has given particular ministries. Priests are ordained to lead God's people in the offering of praise and the proclamation of the gospel. They share with the bishop in the oversight of the church, delighting in its beauty and rejoicing in its well-being. They are to set the example of the good shepherd always before them as the pattern of their calling. With the bishop and their fellow presbyters, they are to sustain the community of the faithful by the ministry of word and sacrament, that we all may grow into the fullness of Christ and be a living sacrifice acceptable to God. Bishop Ruth, I present Torhild Hurlen Fix Owner to be ordained to the office of priest in the Church of God. She is to serve in the benefice of Heathfield. Have those whose duty it is to know this ordinand and examine her, found her to be of godly life and sound learning? They have. Do they believe her to be duly called to serve God in this ministry? They do. Torhill, do you believe that God is calling you to this ministry? I do so believe. Let the declaration and oath be made. The Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the church is called upon to proclaim afresh in every generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, Torhild Fallen Fixerna, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness, and in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. 
the congregation be seated. I, Toril Holm Fixerna, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Toril Holm Fixerna, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Chichester and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. Let us pray for Torhild and for the ministry of the whole people of God. God, our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry each may be an instrument of your love. And give to your servant Torhild, now to be ordained, the needful gifts of grace. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold stood, shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the Lord, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is from 2 Corinthians. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of the reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, 
we entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. I chose you and appointed you, says the Lord, that you should go and bear fruit that shall last. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So, again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life, for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be glorifying unto you, O Lord. Amen. Do be seated. You might have seen an image of the Good Shepherd, a picture hanging maybe in your grandma's house in a spare bedroom somewhere, in your auntie's downstairs loo on a fridge magnet in a Christian bookshop, Certainly if you Google the Good Shepherd, this is what you see. The picture is of Jesus in a grassy meadow. He's white-skinned and blue-eyed. Sunbeams are lighting up his long, blonde, curly hair. 
He's cradling a perfect fluffy newborn lamb and a bit like a Disney princess, he has bluebirds flying around his head and squirrels at his feet. And beneath the image it says, I am the good shepherd. But this scene of pastoral bliss is utterly divorced from the reality of John chapter 10. What the real Jesus of history said then and says to us today is shocking, revolutionary and radical. Jesus of Nazareth, the Middle Eastern Jewish rabbi, makes world-changing claims in our passage. He says things so offensive that he is killed for blasphemy. So our task for the next few minutes is to try to rescue truth from familiarity and hear his voice afresh to us from the pages of scripture. Firstly, Jesus doesn't say, I am the good shepherd. He says, I am the shepherd, the good one. I think the emphasis is quite important. Let me explain. The people of Israel have had thousands of years of kings and priests ruling over them. These leaders were entrusted time and time again with caring for the precious flock of God. Time and time again, they failed to lead the people with any wisdom or righteousness or care. And instead, they drove God's people into idolatry and suffering and darkness. The prophet Ezekiel is raised up and he's had enough of it. He speaks out against the wicked shepherds of Israel. Ezekiel chapter 34, this is what he says. You shepherds of Israel, you have not helped the weak, you have not healed the sick, you have not looked for the lost. You have ruled the people with power but without pity. But, says the Lord, I myself will come. I will seek and save my sheep. I will find the lost. I will heal the sick. I will save my sheep by setting over them one shepherd. And then my sheep will know that I am and their God. So when Jesus announces to the religious leaders of his time, I am the shepherd, the good one, he's announcing not just that he's a good leader in contrast to the wicked shepherds, he's making a blasphemous claim. He is God. He is the fulfillment of God's promise in Ezekiel 34. He has come at last, personally and conclusively, to shepherd his people himself. He is unlike any of the flawed leaders of the past. He is the pure, righteous one, the way and the truth and the life, the holy God. I am is the name for God himself. In Exodus chapter 3, when Moses encounters the Lord at the burning bush and says, well, Lord, if I'm going to speak to the people in your name, I need to know what your name is. And the Lord replies, my name is Haya Asher Haya, I am. That's the name for God. I am being, I am existence, I am reality. I always have been, always will be. I am. And Jesus says, I am the shepherd, the good one. It's so outrageous and offensive that the religious leaders respond by saying, Jesus must be possessed by a demon. And just a few verses later, if we'd read on for a moment in our passage, we would have read that the crowd pick up stones and attempt to stone Jesus to death right there and then. So let's hear Jesus tonight. I am the shepherd, the good one. Jesus is God himself, come to live among us personally, to rescue us, to minister to us, to bind up our wounds to search for us in our lostness and bring us home to his eternal safety. So Torhild, as we ordain you to be a priest tonight, you take on a new role as a shepherd of the flock of God. But don't ever forget that first and foremost, you are one of his sheep. You are to be shepherded by him. He is your salvation. As a leader in the church, you must always remain a follower of the shepherd, the good one. God himself has personally sought and saved you and brought you home. God, of course, is not being flattering with us when he chooses to describe us as his sheep. Sheep are ridiculously stupid animals. They get themselves into all manner of trouble. Uh, when sheep fall on their backs, they are unable to right themselves and stand up again. So they are totally dependent on the shepherd for life itself. So Torhild, 
As a priest, it is not your job to show us what a perfect Christian leader looks like. It is not your job to let us put you on a pedestal and watch as you get busy with your independent, self-reliant, successful ministry. You must never rise above your status as one of the sheep, unable to get on your feet again each day without the rescue and sustaining grace of Jesus, your shepherd. So the defining nature of the good shepherd is as a God who comes to rescue his people. What does that rescue look like? Well, what were the people hoping for? Military might, economic force, and political power. Those were the hopes of the people. That's what they're waiting to see from the anointed Messiah that God sends to rescue them. And Jesus says in our passage, the authenticating mark of his leadership is this, verse 11. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And then by contrast, Jesus speaks at length about the hired hand. The hired hand, he says, sees the wolf coming and runs away. One kind of leadership is a laying down of life. Another is a running away. Now, the hired hand has been paid to look after the sheep, and they do look as if that is what they're doing. They might wear the right robes. They might host good church meetings. They might preach entertaining sermons and they might live in a nice vicarage, but they are fair-weather shepherds. It looks like they're caring for the sheep, but when the wolf comes, they are suddenly nowhere to be seen because the presence of danger reveals the truth. They are only interested, ultimately, in self-preservation. By contrast, Jesus says, he is the one who sacrifices his life for the sheep. Torhild as we ordain you, we do so with a sense of great joy and celebration. But also there's a reverence for the weight of this calling. The ordinal calls you, we've read this already, to set the example of the good shepherd always before you. And his example is precisely this, a laying down of your life for the sake of the sheep. A defining mark of your priestly ministry must be to be alongside and stay alongside people in the toughest of times, through heartbreak, disappointment, illness, spiritual warfare, persecution, false teaching, and danger of every kind, you will walk with your people through the valley of the shadow of death. It's this kind of ministry that Pope Francis was talking about a couple of years ago when he dressed the Catholic priests across the world. And he said, a priest must put their own heart and skin on the line. A priest must smell of the sheep. This phrase came back to me uh, two and a half weeks ago when I led my first ordination as a bishop and I ordained a man called Patrick to serve in a group of rural churches in the wild west, West Sussex. And Patrick told me that his son would be coming to the service but his son would be arriving late because he'd just started a new job as an apprentice shepherd. And uh, you could really tell this because The people at the service were fairly well-dressed, but when the son came in, he was wearing his Wellington boots and overalls, and when he came up for communion and held out his hands to receive the bread, it was actually rather beautiful because they were absolutely filthy. And even though there was COVID physical distancing measures, you could tell here was a man who smelt of the sheep and had done a proper day's work shepherding in the field. So, Torhild, we pray for you at this moment of your ordination as you commit to leading God's people through the ministry of word and sacrament. May you daily look to Jesus as your shepherd, the shepherd, the good one, the one in whose rescue you daily rejoice. And may you know the deep privilege of laying down your life for the sake of the sheep in the sustaining power of Christ. Amen. Will you stand? Let us encourage each other in our faith with the words of the Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to, in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Priests are called to be servants and shepherds among the people to whom they are sent. With their bishop and fellow ministers, they are to proclaim the word of the Lord and to watch for the signs of God's new creation. They are to be messengers, watchmen and stewards of the Lord. They are to teach and to admonish, to feed and provide for his family, to search for his children in the wilderness of this world's temptations and to guide them through its confusions that they may be saved through Christ forever. Formed by the word, they are to call their hearers to repentance and to declare in Christ's name the absolution and forgiveness of their sins. With all God's people, they are to tell the story of God's love. They are to baptise new disciples in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit and to walk with them in the way of Christ, nurturing them in the faith. They are to unfold the scriptures to preach the word in season and out of season, and to declare the mighty acts of God. They are to preside at the Lord's table and lead his people in worship, offering with them a spiritual sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. They are to bless the people in God's name. They are to resist evil, support the weak, defend the poor, and intercede for all in need. They are to minister to the sick and prepare the dying for their death. Guided by the Spirit, they are to discern and foster the gifts of all God's people, that the whole church may be built up in unity and faith. Torhild, we trust that long ago you began to weigh and ponder all this, and that you are fully determined by the grace of God to devote yourself wholly to his service, so that as you daily follow the rule and teaching of our Lord and grow in his likeness, God may sanctify the lives of all with whom you have to do. And now, in order that we may know your mind and purpose, you must make the declarations we put to you. Do you accept the Holy Scriptures as revealing all things necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? I do so accept them. Will you be diligent in prayer, in reading Holy Scripture, and in all studies that will deepen your faith and fit you to bear witness to the truth of the Gospel? By the help of God, I will. Will you lead Christ's people in proclaiming his glorious gospel so that the good news of salvation may be heard in every place? By the help of God, I will. Will you faithfully minister the doctrine and sacraments of Christ as the Church of England has received them so that the people committed to your charge may be defended against error and flourish in the faith? By the help of God, I will. Will you, knowing yourself to be reconciled to God in Christ, Strive to be an instrument of God's peace in the church and in the world. By the help of God, I will.
Will you endeavour to fashion your own life and that of your household according to the way of Christ, that you may be a pattern and example to Christ's people? By the help of God, I will. Will you work with your fellow servants in the gospel for the sake of the kingdom of God? By the help of God, I will. Will you accept and minister the discipline of this church and respect authority duly exercised within it? By the help of God, I will. Will you then, in the strength of the Holy Spirit, continually stir up the gift of God that is in you to make Christ known among all whom you serve? By the help of God, I will. Brothers and sisters, you have heard how great is the charge that this ordinand is ready to undertake, and you have heard her declarations. Is it now your will that she should be ordained? It is. Will you continually pray for her? We will. Will you uphold and encourage her in her ministry? We will. In the name of our Lord, we bid you remember the greatness of the trust that is now to be committed to your charge. Remember always with thanksgiving that the treasure now to be entrusted to you is Christ's own flock, bought by the shedding of his blood on the cross. It is to him that you will render account for your stewardship of God's people. You cannot bear the weight of this calling in your own strength, but only by the grace and power of God. Pray therefore that your heart may be daily enlarged and your understanding of the scriptures enlightened. Pray earnestly for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire and lighten with celestial fire. Thou the anointing Spirit art, who dost thy sevenfold gifts impart. Thy blessed unction from above is comfort, life, and fire of love. Enable with perpetual light the dullness of our blinded sight. Anoint and cheer a soiled face with the abundance of thy grace. Keep for our foes, give peace at all. Where thou art guide, no ill can come. Teach us to know the Father, Son, and Thee, of both to be but one, that through the ages all alone, this may be our endless song. Praise to Thy eternal merit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. 
Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the members of the church in their vocation and ministry, that they may serve him in truth and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Martin, our bishop, Ruth, Bishop of Horsham, William, Bishop of Lewis, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may hunger for truth and thirst after righteousness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Torhil, called to be a priest in his church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness we may proclaim the gospel of reconciliation to the ends of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the unity of the church, that we may be one in Christ according to his will, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are lost and for those who have strayed, that they may return to the way of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and suffering, for the aged and infirm, for the lonely and neglected, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the hungry, for the homeless and the oppressed, for all prisoners and captives, and for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, for grace to repent and mend our lives, that we may be pardoned and absolved from all our sins, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering all who have gone before us in faith and in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Wilfred, Richard, and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. We praise and glorify you, Almighty Father, because in your infinite love you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession, a royal priesthood, a universal church. We praise and glorify you because you have given us your only Son, Jesus Christ, the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn of all creation and head of the church. We praise and glorify you that by his death he has overcome death, and that having ascended into heaven, he has given his gifts abundantly to equip your holy people for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. And now we give you thanks that you have called your servant Torhild, whom we ordain in your name to share as a priest in the ministry of the gospel of Christ, the apostle and high priest of our faith and the shepherd of our souls. Therefore, Father, through Christ our Lord, we pray. Send down the Holy Spirit on your servant Torhild for the office and work of a priest in your church.
through your spirit, Heavenly Father, give your servant Torhill grace and power to proclaim the gospel of your salvation and minister the sacraments of the new covenant. Renew her in holiness. Give her wisdom and discipline to work faithfully with those committed to her charge. In union with her fellow servants in Christ, may she reconcile what is divided, heal what is wounded, and restore what is lost. May she declare your blessings to your people. May she proclaim Christ's victory over the powers of darkness and absolve in Christ's name those who turn to him in faith. So shall a people be made whole in Christ to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you, our God and Father, by whom, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, belong glory and honour, worship and praise, now and forever. Amen. Torhild received this book as a sign of the authority which God has given you this day to preach the gospel of Christ and to minister his holy sacraments. May God, who anointed the Christ with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, anoint and empower you to reconcile and bless his people. Would you welcome your new priest? God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come, he has given us the spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We won't be uh, wandering around the church to hug and kiss each other at this uh, time of pandemic, but I suggest you catch people's eye and offer them the British Sign Language, peace be with you. Peace be with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our great High Priest. He was lifted up for us on the cross that he might reveal your glory and draw all people to himself. You exalted him to your right hand on high and through your Holy Spirit, you sent upon your people a rich diversity of gifts. From this royal priestly people, you raise up ministers to proclaim your word, to care for your people, and to be stewards of your holy mysteries. You call them to serve the world your son redeemed, and build up his body, the church, to be his bride. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Wilfred, St. Richard of Chichester and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom? and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The congregation be seated as we continue in prayer. We pray together with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ, amen. The blood of Christ, Amen.
Let's pray together. Lord God, Heavenly Father, grant your church today the faith of her apostles, the hope of her martyrs, and the love of her Lord, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. For our blessing, I would just like to say in terms of the news and notices, if I may, uh, just simply a huge thank you. Thank you to the wardens and uh, to Mitch and the team here who've made this service possible, particularly all the extra measures to do with church cleaning and people sanitising and masks and distancing. Uh, it, is, it is a lot to take on and we're really grateful to you that this has been able to happen. We think it hasn't, it's been several hundred years before anybody's been ordained here and Torhild is certainly the first female to be ordained in this church as far as we know. Uh, so thank you for your hospitality and welcome and for all that's done behind the scenes, uh, hidden as it were from sight. We're really grateful. Second thing to say is that I heard you all promise to pray for Torhild and I will hold you to that promise. Uh, so please do pray for her, uh, not just in the days to come, but in the weeks and months and years to come. Hold her in your prayers. And if during this service anyone has had a sense perhaps of God stirring in them questions about your vocation, about uh, whether the Lord is calling you to some kind of licensed or ordained ministry, then please do talk to Torhild. She's a good person uh, to have discernment conversations with, or Mitch, the other members of the ministry team here, and, um, and they will pray with you and help you have that conversation with God and with other Christians, and it will be their honour and delight. The Lord be with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. May the Father whose glory fills the heavens cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. Amen. May Christ, who has ascended to the heights, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip and strengthen you in your ministry. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you, those who you love and pray for, this night and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.